Today, we're gonna to be talking about running with scissors and playing with knives. Your mom will be so proud. The fuck? Gotcha, bitch. Oh, damn it. The material we're gonna take a look at today is borrowed from multiple different Filipino martial arts. I have a unique perspective, a unique approach to how I teach. I try to teach more along the lines of what is gonna work in today's society, taking into consideration our legal system, how things are going to be accepted socially, and how it looks visually, because obviously cameras are everywhere. More than likely what you're doing will be recorded. Given that, we're going to approach looking at the bladed weapon from a long range perspective. There are many ranges that you can take into consideration. I generally start here in the beginning because if I can avoid getting close to the threat, I generally live longer. First thing to take a look at is the rules of edged weapon fighting. For me, there's a basic four. Number one, run. Number two, run. And number three, again, run. Number four is going to be find some type of equalizer or carry some type of equalizer that you can use. Since it's our first time taking a look at this material, one of the things we want to do in the beginning is keep things simple. So I'm going to start that out with a quote from one of my instructors, Tuhan Tim Wade. And one of the things he says in the beginning is to develop superior firepower and superior mobility or maneuverability. We're going to start off looking at developing firepower with a blade. We can also train this with a stick or different types of weaponry, which we may use today because it's a little easier to see visually. Also, one of the things we want to be able to do is develop the ability to train in an environment. This is probably most commonly seen in the industry as rolling in jujitsu, pummeling in stand-up grappling. Rolling in grappling gives you an environment to try things out and to do it against pressure testing with your opponent. Really, you should have a environment like this to train in all of your major areas of training. Firearms, bladed weaponry, blunt weaponry, striking, standing grappling or pummeling or working clinch work, and all of the different areas of training on the ground. So same thing with the blade. We want to be able to develop a method that we can move around and train at different ranges. Today we're looking at long range, as I stated earlier, to be able to develop those techniques, the attributes, timing, placement, those sort of things that we need, and be able to cultivate the different knowledge that comes out of being able to work against a resisting opponent. Okay, so one of the first things we'll take a look at is single weight or double weight alignment or placement. This is based on the human machine, how we're built. So I have a couple of options. One is I can be double weighted, having weight split evenly between the feet, or I can be single weighted, having weight more in one foot. We obviously will transfer between the two of these. One of the more difficult ones is training your body when to recognize that you are in a single weight alignment. So the first set of basics we're going to take a look at is going to be out of a single weight stance, which just looks like this. Most of my weight is in the back foot. It doesn't matter which foot you're playing with. Just as long as I can uh, start to develop the ability to physically recognize when I'm weighted in one foot. We do this because when we start moving, you're going to spend a lot of time transferring through your, your weight through a single leg or foot as you're moving in and out between distance between your opponent. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is striking methods. Different systems will have different angles uh, of striking or numbering systems that they'll do with different weapon systems. Um, I'm going to use the stick, but this translates into blade work just as well. Um, this is a little easier to see on the camera for you guys. So one of the first two angles we're going to take a look at is angle one and angle two. And if you look at different numbering systems, these are two very common angles. Uh, and that's one of, the reason, one of the reasons for it is it's a high percentage that it will happen when people are swinging weapon systems at you. So those two angles are a forehand off the right hand and a backhand. Commonly referred to as like an angle one 
or an angle two. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take angle one and angle two and we'll put it on top of our body placement, our single weight alignment. This is the foundation of the drill that we'll be building everything else on top of. So single weight with an angle one and an angle two. Okay, the next thing we'll add to that basic drill is called crossing the bridge. What you're basically doing when you train with a partner or you use your imagination, you're drawing a line with your angle one and angle two across the bridge of the nose. Um, those lines on your partner would look similar to that. So if I do that with my partner, I simply just cross the bridge. This keeps me from swinging the stick too low. If uh, my partner is crossing on the bridge line and I'm crossing low, mechanically they can overpower that angle of the stick. That's one of the reasons we want to be, we want to keep that angle up is to protect ourselves. So the basic drill with a partner would just look like that. I could step in, make range, and out. My partner could do the same thing. So that is putting crossing the bridge or the principle of crossing the bridge into your basic drill. This would be cutting too low. Cross the bridge. Building the habit of crossing your opponent's bridge also builds in uh, the habit of attacking the eye line. That's one of the things I want to take from my opponent is their ability to see. And the same translates from a, a blunt instrument into an edged weapon. The next element we'll add into that drill is the principle of a 90 degree angle in relation to the wrist. There are times, obviously, with a longer blunt instrument or with a blade where I will tip the weapon system forward. And it will generally be determined by range, placement, and timing. It's easy to let that go. The skill set to develop the discipline not to do it when you don't need to be doing it, that's generally the first thing. And it, it would reply, uh, apply to a edged weapon system as well. Um, we're just going to be showing it with the stick for training methods. So uh, as you saw in the earlier drill, if we have space between us and we're both maintaining that 90 degree angle, there's no contact with the weapon system unless I move closer. So if I'm at distance and we're both maintaining that 90 degree angle, there's no contact. If I move in, there's contact. If I'm back out, there is no contact. If she moves in, contact is made, she backs up. And that is the principle of the 90 degree angle on the wrist. So one of the reasons for this, if I'm moving with my opponent and I'm maintaining that discipline, uh, it keeps more of the weapon between me and my opponent. If I start to tip the blade or the stick forward, it opens up the door for her to attack me, depending on range. But if she's got good movement and placement and she's out positioning me as we're playing and I, I tip that forward, she has an option to come over the top. And again, a lot of this is determined by the game. You know, your timing, your placement, uh, the ability to fake your opponent out with your weapon system as you're moving in. The second thing we take a look at is if there's contact on the weapon system, it tells me where my opponent is during the action a lot of times. Now this probably you'll see more on the blunt instrument or if you're training with a stick. Um, if I'm angle one and angle two and I feel a tip on that, I know her hand is going to be in range at that moment. Um, I don't even have to visually judge it. I'll pick it up on feel through the weapon system but like i said again this obviously for a edged weapon shorter weapon uh, it's going to be trickier to play that game when i mainly want to point it out uh, because it's good to train with both of these working with the stick is going to improve your skill with any type of blade work and vice versa
The next element we're going to add in is the third hand or the alive hand placement. You can set it flat on the chest. For me, I like to do more of what I call a thumb ride on the body. So it sits like that. And that will just go in the drill. Basically, once you've got your one and two angles, you can, on the uh, backhand diagonals, you can start to insert that hand. If I were to add in additional lines of attack, that hand will come in on the side that the weapon clears. That is just the principle of the third hand or the alive hand. Right. So one of the reasons we train the third hand is because eventually there can be a weapon system in this. Uh, maybe I am using an improvised weapon system as a blunt instrument you know, using the same angles of attack. It doesn't change with the weapon system. And I have to access a blade with my left hand. So I'd have the ability, regardless of what that weapon system is here to play a weapon system in this hand as well. It's pretty common in Filipino martial arts in order to train both sides of the body. Whether you're going to use it or not in application, we'll work with double blades and double sticks in order to educate the body and train those mechanics both in the left or the right side. This will introduce a basic training drill to start to ingrain habits around a bladed or a blunt instrument into your nervous system. Of course, there's a lot of additional things you can add to this drill. Uh, these are just some of the references of principles that I introduce in the beginning when I'm starting someone new out with this concept. Okay, boys and girls, now it's time for your keyboard warrior therapy session. Yes, I know that this or that can happen in all of these scenarios. We are very aware of your superior intellect and knowledge on the subject. And both I and the YouTube community greatly appreciate all of your comments and valuable input. Congratulations on winning at life. Here's your participation trophy. <laughs> okay, so we've got that basic drill. And what we're gonna do is start putting in some of the maneuverability. There are different angles that you can play. One of the first two I teach is a uh, forward 45 or a reverse 45. On the forward 45, we're going to be doing one of the footworks from Piquiti Tertia, which is called a takeoff forward. What that looks like, if we're coming out of that basic stance we were in earlier, I'll drop weight into one foot and step on an angle. So you can mix it in with your angle one or angle two that you're playing already. Generally, in the beginning, I'll enter on an angle one. Later, it doesn't matter. So that is the takeoff forward on a 45 degree angle. Okay, one of the reasons that we are doing this angle on a 45 is because of the arc of weaponry and where we place ourselves in interaction with the flow of weaponry. If she feeds me the angle one and I go on this 45 degree angle this way, I'm walking into the angle of the stick, the attack. So what I would like to do is go to the outside of that angle if they are attacking directly to me. So I'd like to be on this side of their body. One of the reasons I want to get this or flank them is it eliminates their options later. As I step in, I have to make sure that I'm adjusting my posture because I don't want to put my head in that angle. So as I step, I've got to make adjustments to that as I'm starting to come through. Now generally, like we mentioned earlier on that step, and again, this could change depending on what's going on. I'm going to attack with the number one as well. And since she's presenting her hand, that would probably be the area that I'm going to attack. So if she comes in angle one, I will just play that on the hand. Generally, I'll tap the stick for safety. That's one of the reasons that we're choosing to go on that forward 45 degree angle. The second angle I generally introduce is the reverse 45. 
and I'm going to be reversing out on this angle to my left. So if I'm playing out of that basic stance we learned, I can drop weight into that foot and exit on that line. That is the reverse 45 degree angle. One of the uh, reasons we take this angle at first um, is same thing in relation to the arc of weaponry. If my partner is feeding an angle one and I step on this angle, I am stepping into the line of fire. I may be able to get out of range, but she can continue her uh, attack easier in this line. Step back for me just a little bit. So she does that same thing and I'm over here, I'm, I'm able to actually force her to make an adjustment. So between the two, this one is a little safer angle for me. Now that's not to say later, we don't change it up. Yes, we do. Um, all of the options and the things can happen can eventually open up, and especially when you start to play and move around with your opponent. These are just the first two that we introduce for someone that is just getting started with these ideas and concepts. So the next thing that uh, we want to consider is building an environment. It's what we talked about earlier in the video about jujitsu and how they roll. They have an environment where they can test things out against different levels of resistance and lots of knowledge and information come out of that. So one of the things we'll do in the beginning is we'll limit technique or technical applications to certain things. And when we start to introduce this to movement, it forces us to win the game based on attributes instead of changing techniques and trying to trick the opponent, which you can always go back and add in. So some of the attributes we want to develop, one is timing, the ability to out-time your opponent. And there's three basic times that we want to develop, ahead of time, on time, and behind time. Number two is placement, superior positioning to my opponent being in the right place at the right time and being there ahead of time. Next is going to be optics, training your eyes to see. When we first started sparring, especially with Coach Tim, he would do things that I wouldn't even pick up. As I started to train more and develop my ability, I started to be able to see what he was setting up. So I started to develop better optics. And number four is judgment. In other words, making good decisions and applying those applications against resistance. So those are the four things we want to force out of our game. And like I said, we will do that commonly by limiting your technical choices, your techniques, the different things you can do in the game. You can always add all of that in later. So on that topic, for me, when I'm teaching uh, in the academy, I try to teach through three different levels or filters with any given information. One is technical, teaching technique. The second is going to be attribute development. And a lot of times attribute development is going to be built around drilling. And a lot of drills and different to develop different things, so it ingrains into your nervous system. So an example of that is better timing, better sensitivity, better optics, the ability to see. The third area I call body state training. And this is a idea that I learned out of Chinese boxing and Shaolin Kung Fu. It is the state you are in when you apply whatever you're doing. So one of the examples of this is the ability to control different levels of tension in your body, especially under stress. You will see this in systems that spend a lot of time in attribute, not attribute development, but um, environmental scenarios. Again, like rolling in jujitsu. In the beginning, in that environment, generally most students are pretty tense, but as they start to progress through the system, they get more rank, their bodies start to relax while they're playing, while they're applying techniques. And this makes them much more significant in what they're doing. They're much more substantial. And an example of that in jiu-jitsu again would be around purple belt, the student starts to relax and they get much heavier on the mat. That is body state training or body state development. And those are the three levels that 
we want to have training methods to develop. That way you're not just learning technique and adding to the technique list. Okay, if you've liked the video and this information today, you want a little more information on picking out a blade, you can check out one of my previous videos right here that we put together on putting together your everyday training kit. But we can cover, we can cover that. All that was just a facade. Just to, get your guard down. Just to get my guard down? You serious? What the hell? <laughs>